Hi, how's it going? Hello everyone. Out here in the garage today for part two of my testing with the three multi-process MIG welders. Right now I only have two of them on the bench. I have the Hitbox Synergic MIG 200 Pro and the Yes Welder MP200. And sitting on the cart at the moment is the Fronius Transteel 2200. In this video, I will again just be strictly using the MIG feature of these welders, and probably in the next video, I will deal with stick and TIG. But for today, I'll be testing input and output amps, so how much they draw and how much they put out. I'll also be testing the power factor of each of these welders, and I will be testing their performance on 120 volts. So how much can each one put out, how well do they run, and how much do they draw? So let's get right into it. Starting with the hitbox on 120 volts, I set the output as high as I could get it in manual mode. Surprisingly, you can see that it displays amperage and voltage in real time while welding, and it's pretty accurate. Many cheap welders, including the Yes Welder MP200, do not do this. With the welder completely maxed out like this on 120 volts, it was putting out around 150 amps at 22 volts. That's pretty darn good, but unfortunately it's not practical to run it there. I had it cut out on me a couple times. The machine didn't turn off and I could immediately start welding again when it happened, but it's still not ideal. Also, it draws 50 amps from the wall at these settings. Not very practical for the circuits most people have in their homes. If you turn the settings down just a bit, it still welds nice and it doesn't kick out and it puts out around 2800 watts. At these settings, it draws around 38 amps. That's still a lot, but it's a bit less likely to result in a tripped breaker, um, at least for short welds. 38 amps will still trip a 20 amp breaker before too long if you weld continuously. On 240 volts, the hitbox draws around 38 amps when maxed out. Max output was around 180 amps at 26 volts. That's not bad, though not quite the 200 amps claimed. 26 volts is right on the claimed max though, and it might hit the claimed amperage too if I used larger wire. However, it did cut out seemingly on overload protection once or twice when I was testing for the previous video with it maxed out like this. It didn't cut out today while running that way, but I don't know that I would count on it being able to hit 200 amps reliably even with different wire. Maybe it would reliably hit that amperage as long as you didn't also max out the voltage. But either way, it does run smooth with the maxed out settings and turned down just a bit, I never had it cut out. So it'll put out around 4,400 watts on 240 volts without issue, and it will hit nearly 4,700 watts, though mine has cut out a few times when running at that high level. Power factor is around 0.65, which is pretty bad, but it's also fairly typical for an inverter welder without any correction. Next up is the Yes Welder MP200. I couldn't get as much amperage out of it as I could the others. Running on 120 volts with the voltage and wire speed maxed, it provided 24 volts at around 130 amps. That's almost as much wattage as the others because of the 24 volts, but it also ran really rough at those settings. It will run smooth if I turn the voltage down to 19 volts or so, and it'll still put out about 130 amps at that point, but that puts the output wattage at around 2400. Amp draw from the wall was around 31 amps at that point, so that's usable, but the output on 120 volts is definitely lower than the other two. Running on 240 volts is more of the same. With the wire feed speed maxed out, I was only able to get a little over 160 amps out of this machine. If I had the voltage set so that it would run smooth, it only provided about 3200 watts of output, which is similar to what the Hitbox and Fronius did on 120 volts. If I maxed the voltage as well as the wire feed speed, it ran rough, but the wattage did increase to 4,000 watts or so. A little bit better, but still not nearly what the other two would do. All this testing was done with 035 inch wire. I'd probably get more amperage out of it if I told the welder I was using 030 inch wire, so it would kind of trick it into using a faster wire feed speed, but that assumes I could adjust the voltage far enough to get it to run right but running as intended with the correct settings, I don't get anywhere near the 160 amps claimed on 120 volts or the 200 amps claimed on 240 volts. In terms of output wattage, the S-Welder lags well behind the other two. 
power factor on the MP200 is around 0.6. Moving on to the Fronius, it seems to have a soft limit of a little over 3000 watts of output when running on 120 volts. I imagine this is to limit the draw from the circuit when running on typical 120 volt circuits so that they can meet you know, various safety and regulatory standards. However, it doesn't seem to have a specific limit on amperage or voltage, just the total output wattage. So if the combination of voltage and wire feed speed that I use results in much over 3000 watts of output, it seems to automatically back off those settings to prevent it from going very much over 3000. But as long as that wattage limit is not exceeded, it will crank out massive amperage. So if I set the voltage to around 19 volts, I can get over 160 amps out of it and it runs nice and smooth, no problem. And if I turn the voltage down a bit more to around 17 or so, I can get the amperage to peak at over 200 amps, averaging right around 180, which is pretty surprising on a 120 volt supply. But because the voltage is pretty low, it's still only a little over 3000 watts of total output. If I leave the wire feed speed set where it was and turn the voltage up, the amperage actually comes down, preventing the output from going much over 3000 watts. The upshot of this limit is that the max amp draw on 120 volts from this Fronius is around 28 to 30 amps. That's usable with typical duty cycles on a 20 amp breaker. And if I turn the output down to levels similar to what I get out of the Yes Welder, the amp draw drops to around 22 amps. On 240 volts, the limit seems to be actually a limit on max amperage rather than on wattage. The rated output is 210 amps, but it will go above that, but 225 amps or so seems to be the limit. So I can run around 25 volts and it will smoothly crank out 220 amps, no problem. This provides an output wattage well over 5000 watts. But since it seems to be an amperage limit rather than a wattage limit, I can crank the voltage up. Here I was running 30 volts at over 200 amps. That provides over 6,000 watts and was starting to spray even with 7525 gas. Despite the output wattage being much higher at this point, the input current was still less than the other two, and that is largely down to the power factor correction. Power factor on the Fronius is right at 0.99. For those who don't know, one is unity, so you can't get any better than a power factor of one. Just for kicks, I welded up a 3 inch T-joint with each of these welders on 120 volts. All of them were in synergic mode with the settings maxed out. The hitbox and the Fronius both label these settings as fit for 1 8 of an inch steel, not 3 16 The MP200 labels the max setting on 120 volts as good for 5 16 inch steel, but that's silly considering it can barely handle over a quarter inch, even on 240 volts. I recorded each weld being laid down and what the results looked like so you know what we're dealing with. The cut and etch results on each of these welds are all relatively similar, and that's not too surprising considering none of these welders will go much above 3000 watts of output on 120 volts. I did clean the mill scale off of the weld area on each of these pieces, but I didn't otherwise do anything particularly special with these welds to try and get you know, maximum penetration. In other words, you may be able to get a bit better results with different technique on different joint setups, etc. But I think the main takeaway is that regardless of the welder, 
short arc MIG with 7525 shielding gas running on 120 volts is going to struggle with 3 16 inch material. Granted, for a non-critical application, these all would probably hold up okay as they all did tie in some. But in a critical application, especially something with heavy dynamic loads, you'd probably be better off running flux core if you need to weld thicker material than 1 8 inch on 120 volts. So that was a look at what kind of output you can get from each of these welders on MIG. In the next video, I'll compare TIG and stick on these machines. And in the meantime, if you have any questions, post them in the comments and I'll answer if I can. If you'd also like to see a video specifically with each of these machines running flux core, let me know. As always, thanks for watching. Take care.